and the blood of Jesus is very important. Your knowledge in the scripture, your knowledge in your walk with Christ is very important. Just even say your knowledge, your knowledge, your knowledge with your walk with God. Amen, somebody. Faith walk it according to knowledge. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Tell them is a faith to walk it according to knowledge. Amen, somebody. Amen. How many you have faith and lift your hands? Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen. I'm just going to ask two questions. Amen, somebody. Amen. So we say that we have faith. Amen, somebody. What do you have faith for? Come on, amen. Uh, anybody, it, there's no wrong answers. We just want to hear from you. What do you have faith for? Yes, it's the Amos. By? By expecting? By expecting to meet God at the end, which is the final destination of your faith. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Which is the greatest hope of all faith. So, Mr. Abel said that her faith is to meet God at the end. Amen, somebody. Amen, Amen somebody. That's a very important topic. That Abel said faith has length. It has breadth. It has width. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. And the scripture said that God has given what is known as the fivefold ministry for the perfect of the saints so therefore our faith let me say your faith must be perfected so so if we have to take uh, sister Amy's angle of faith we got to understand that uh, everything here we're going to leave it so our faith is uh, amen somebody is beyond what people are believing God for today many people are believing God just for a brand new house just for a car amen if they were attending church regularly and paying their tithes for a house and for a car and for a good husband, they, they aim at the moment they get that, they get relaxed, amen, somebody, and they stop doing the things that they used to do before that got them blessed. And let the devil come in and steal it from them. Some of them might have a house, but they don't have a family. Some of them might have a car, but they don't have peace. Come on, somebody. Amen. But the greatest assurance of your faith is, amen, somebody. Jesus says, strive to enter here into the straight gate. Amen, somebody. Strive to enter into the kingdom of God. Strive to enter into eternity. Amen, somebody. For he said, now is the way that leadeth on the life eternal. And there are few people that find it. Amen, somebody. But he said, broad is the way. And many there are that go down to destruction. Amen, somebody. And there's many that find the way of destruction. Come on, somebody. Am I speaking to somebody? Am I speaking to somebody? Amen, somebody. So there are many types of faith. There is temporal faith. There is faith with the gold. And then there is eternal faith. Come on, somebody. So there is temporal faith. There is faith for a wife that is temporal. There's faith for a husband that is temporal. There's faith for a car that is temporal. Come on, somebody. Amen. There's faith for healing that is temporal. Amen. Come on. Amen, somebody. And then there's faith of eternal life. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. And the Bible is full of the diversity of one God, of one faith, but heights and breadth and realms of that faith. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen, somebody. And because people don't understand faith. Amen, amen somebody. Amen. The amen, they have limited the God they have served. Correct. And they have stumbled amen. on the basis of their faith. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. So, Sister Ava said that her faith is to meet with God. That is the greatest faith there is. That is eternal life. That's what Jesus came to bring. Amen. Jesus said, repent ye and be baptized for the kingdom of God is at hand. He said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Today, preachers have left the message of preaching abundant life and, of, and they are preaching abundant cars, abundant house, abundant jobs, abundance of a bank account. 
Come on, somebody. Amen. We have a bunch of inspirational preachers leading the world today on TBN and inspirational challenges and writing all different types of books. And they're all about living your best life on the earth, but they're not telling you how to get to heaven. Come on. You need to understand, see, you might say, but how come what these preachers, preachers walk in? Because God has ordained laws before the foundations of the earth that will continue to walk, whether you are a sinner or a righteous man. Amen. Laws are sowing and reaping. Amen. We'll walk for a sinner just like we'll walk for a righteous man. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on. Amen, somebody. Amen. If, if, I, if I was serving God to be a rich man, amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Then I have no need to serve God because the wealthiest men in the world are not the children of God. Amen, so Am I speaking to somebody? But that is the message that people preach today because the church of Jesus Christ is in poverty. Because of, uh, because of their basis of faith. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Yeah, amen, somebody. And how can I describe this basis of faith? Amen, somebody. I will describe the basis of faith as titles. Amen, somebody. Tell you that we are living one life with diversity of titles. But the, so there's one faith, but there is titles to our faith. There is one God, amen, somebody. And in the Old Testament, there were diversity of titles to that one God. There was Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Yahweh. Come on, somebody. In the New Testament, God presented himself on the one name. He has given a name that is far above every other name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The Father reveals a name that is above every other name. Kali, amen, somebody. Ram Sita, come on, somebody. The Father, God the Father, revealed a name that is above all names. If I think in the heaven shall bow and things on the earth shall bow and things under the earth shall bow. Amen, somebody. That's why that you only see demons respect the name of Jesus. They respond to that name. They manifest to that name. They are cast out of that name. That's why you don't go in a Hindu temple and see demons cast out. You don't go in a Muslim in a mosque and see demons cast out. You see manifestations of demons but you do not see them cast out. Amen. 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 And so we speak to your faith as titles. Come on, somebody. And, and the reason why I, I want to explain it in this way, amen, somebody. We have, we have amen, somebody. We have, we have people today who we, we're seeking, we go to, amen, draw reference in this area. It, it is most understanding. You can understand it better, amen, somebody. We have people today, you, you, seek, you seek a man or you seek a woman, you seek a mate, but you don't seek a husband or a wife. You see, a, a husband is a title that you put on, not by age. Come on, somebody. A wife is a title that you put on, not by age, but by responsibility. The scriptures say, flee youthful loss. What is youthful loss? Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Flee youthful loss. Lust means desire, so people feel lonely, they almost begin to act up at a certain age and they just see somebody and like them. They like a, a woman, they like a man. But amen somebody. But in the kingdom of God, they don't have boyfriend and girlfriend. They don't have I like you and you like me and let me see if it will work. We have a God who is so proof. We have a God who judges all things. We have a God who leads. We have a God who directs. We have a God who we acknowledge. Amen somebody. That he will direct our path. Amen somebody. Somebody. Amen, somebody. I want you to understand. So what a man does, amen, somebody, is that he prepares himself to be a husband, amen, somebody. So love is not a feeling, love is demonstration. When the Bible said God so loved the world, he demonstrated his love by giving his own 
only begotten son. So the world teaches that love is a feeling, but love is not a feeling. Love is a demonstration. Come on, somebody. So many people get married off of that feeling of love. Come on, somebody. And then you have a divorce and marriage five and six times in one lifetime. You started off in love with one person. Amen. Amen. And after you started off in love, you're feeling change of love towards them. Amen. But love, the Bible tells us that love cannot be changed. Amen. Love endureth all things. Love beareth all things. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. So then what is love? Love is preparation and demonstration. Amen. What is love? Preparation and demonstration. What is love? Preparation and demonstration. So if I am to become a husband, I must prepare. It, the Bible said that the birds and the beasts of the field are smarter than the children of men. The Bible said that the birds prepare a nest for their young ones. The Bible said that the beasts of the field store up for the time of winter. Amen, somebody. Amen, I'm getting to a point I want you to understand. Amen, somebody. So youthful lust have no direction. Youthful lust is just, you see me, I see you. You like me, I like you. Let me see where it go from here. Come on, somebody. And by the next three, four months, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody pregnant. Somebody don't have a job. Somebody don't have a work. Somebody didn't know how to cook. Somebody didn't know how to boil water. So that is lust. That stems from the flesh, the vein of man that has no direction. Come on, somebody. And that feeling changed along the way. That's why people divorce and get married all the time. That's why people have been in, in 10 and 5 relationships and 20 in their lifetime. Amen, somebody. Because they are not living by the demonstration of love. They are living by the fleshly desires of the flesh. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Before you know it, they are three and four children and they are living in frustration. And they are living in battle and they become emotionally unstable. And they don't know what to do and they are and they're praying to God and asking God, God, why me? Father, why are you going to this? What I do? Come on, somebody. And they're crying out to God. Why me? But God did not do anything to you. You were set up by your own lust and desires and choices because you had no knowledge of what was faith and what was God's standard and plan for your life. So as I said, if there's one faith, but there are titles of faith. And to each title, there must be a demonstration of that faith. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Am I speaking to somebody? Am I speaking to somebody? Amen, somebody. So a husband must be pure for a wife. A wife must be pure for a husband. There must be duties that must be fulfilled. That is your faith. Faith simply is a belief system. Come on, somebody. Come on. You cannot trust in God for something he did not tell you about. Amen. 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 Come on, today you must say, wise up. If you're wise up, you're going to be delivered. Amen. Many of us, we are trusting in God for something he didn't talk to you about. You are trusting in God for something you never acknowledged him for. Faith is trusting in God. Faith is depending on God. Faith is believing in what God said. He will bring us promise to pass. Amen. God promised Abraham a child. He was able to wait over 90 years to receive a child. Because God promised it. If God did not promise Abraham, he would have waited 90 years in vain. Amen. 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 So you inherit eternal life because of your faith. Amen. For the Bible says the race is not for the fast, not for the strip, but for those who endure to the end. So the title of eternal life is given to them who has an, an eternal faith. Amen. They have a faith that goes beyond time. Amen. Come on, somebody. So God has given us divine. 
Amen, somebody. One faith, but title stay. So you, you, God has given you faith to believe for your marriage, faith to believe for your healing, faith to believe for your deliverance, faith to believe for eternal life. And if you identify the different levels of faith and the final destination is eternal life, you will understand what to put first. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. She will understand when you reach 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's not to put a man first, it's to prepare your life first. Because you're not preparing your life for a man, a man to come and go as he please. You're preparing your life for a husband that will be committed to you. You are preparing, amen, somebody. That's, that's your faith. And the man is preparing himself to become a husband. Because of that preparation, when people come together, they get married in a church. Come on, somebody. And they think that God blessing is upon it. God blessing is not upon it if it was not commanded by the proper order that you ordained since the foundations of the earth. So if I, I get married and I and, and I get married to a man that don't have a stable job, I have to expect that I would have a stable I am not going to have regular food. I'm not going to have regular pampas to put on my children. Come on. Then you sit there in the corner and pray. God, why me, Lord? Why are you going through this? Why are you blessing me, Lord? So then you say, think. You, you will get wise. You will get the wisdom of God. Fast. You're going to get the wisdom of God. And you go, you're going to God to ask God why I'm going through all this. God didn't put you through all that. You put yourself through all that. Yeah, yeah. It's that things you can't blame the devil for. Don't you blame the devil for it. The devil just woke with what you like. He just woke with what he knows that will tempt you. He just woke with what he knows that you go to life. Tell the neighbor, say, add titles to your faith. And you're going to understand faith. So there's, there, so there's the title of eternal life. There's the faith that brings eternal life. What the faith that brings eternal life in is dedication. You see how you all come out here in spite of all that rain? Amen. That's the type of dedication it takes to bring eternal life. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Just like you are dedicated to a job. Amen. And you know being dedicated to the job will get you promotion and favor with your boss. Amen. So you understand the faithfulness and the dedication to the job will keep you in favor with your boss and get you a promotion. So you got to understand your dedication with God. Your dedication in your prayer life. Your dedication in your fasting life. Your dedication, amen somebody. Tell the name of your dedication to eternal life tells us about your faith. Come on. Come on. Come on. Tell your neighbor say your dedication towards the eternal life tells you of your faith in God's word. In God's word. In God's word. Your dedication towards your job tells your boss how much you want the job how much you want the promotion come on somebody come on somebody come on amen you have time your boss is going to call you in he's going to he's going to you know he's going to he's going to take all the notes the manager have about you Come on, and decide based on your performance Amen. if you're worthy of promotion. Are you? Amen. Tell me, are you worthy of promotion? Are you worthy of God God promoting you in the spirit realm? Come on, are you worthy of that anointing that will cause breakthroughs and healing in your life? God runs performance tests. You know that? Amen. The same way your boss has the manager observing you, your performance before he is looking for a candidate to promote. 
before he can promote you, he's running a, a scan over your life. Based on the performance in your in your job, based on your dedication, come on, am I speaking to somebody? Based on your consistency, Hallelujah! Tell your neighbor, there's one faith, one God, one baptism, different administrations, one name given by men shall be. Say, but God has given us titles to walk with on the earth and he gave some apostles and he gave some prophets and he gave some pastors and he gave some evangelists and he gave some teachers all these are titles for a specific job on the earth amen somebody amen somebody and in the church Today, I say each and every one of you have a title, amen, somebody. So we have title of ushers, and we have song leaders, we have musicians. They are given a job to do. Come on, somebody, amen, somebody. We have deacons, amen, somebody. Am I speaking to somebody? They, they, we have members, we have visitors, and amongst their personal life, there is husbands, amen, somebody. There are wives, there are sons. And there are daughters, amen, somebody. There are grandchildren, there are cousins, come on, somebody. Amen, somebody. Now you can be a good friend to somebody and not a good husband. Amen. You can be a person that can get along with people and not, and not able to get along with your wife. Because you're, you're on, you're, you're, you pick up the title of friendship and you understand friendship, but you don't understand husbandship. But yes, yeah, I'm telling you. Amen. Say amen. amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. I can be a great prophet and not a good husband. Because prophet is a title, right? So I can be a great prophet to God people, but not a great husband to a wife. But everything is on my faith. My faith will teach me how to be a husband. My faith will teach me how to be a prophet. My faith will teach me how to be a leader. My faith will teach me how to invest. Come on, somebody. There are people that they, 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 they want healing. Amen, somebody. There are some that get healing if they don't know how to watch over the healing. Then there is a testimony is a title as well. The Bible says you overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. Your testimony is a title. Every testimony you give, you have to watch over it. And the church got to be praying that the person who testifies keep their testimony. Come on, somebody. Because Jesus told us when he healed them and cast all the devils from them, he told them, go and sin no more. Lest the worst thing come upon you. Amen. What did you do then? Go and sin no more. Lest the worst thing come upon you. So what do you are telling them? Go and keep your testimony. Amen. The testimony of who I am and what I did. Yeah. And how you received it. And how to keep what you received. Amen. So... Satan can steal your testimony, he can steal your healing, he can steal your deliverance, he can steal your miracle. Oftentimes you find people, they will come and testify of what God do, and it didn't take two weeks at the same testimony they testify about. It, it is, uh, uh, amen, what you are testifying about, it is lost. Amen. And they want to know what happened, you know why has it testified, it has sit down. What by God was so great to me, and I, they just sit down and elapse. But before the testimony came, you know what they were doing? Every night they were on the knees. In the name of Jesus. Every day they were opening that Holy Scripture and reading and seeking for a word from God. And they wanted to hear from God. Come on, somebody. But the moment that testimony come, they lie down in the spirit and I bet God is so great. And the thief come while he, while he was relaxing. Amen. 
and take the greatness that God brought for you. Amen. Come on, somebody. Come on. A generous person could give you a, a very nice vehicle. Amen. And you can leave it park outside and you can leave the keys in an area that a thief knows where it is and they can pick it up and go with it. Amen. And then you go and ask God, God, and you give me this testimony. And you give me this, Lord. How come I lost it? Because you left it available for the thief to take it. And the Bible said, the devil coming to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Satan has many titles. One of his titles known is he's a thief. And if God has given you a testimony, the thief coming. But you steal, kill, and destroy. So we are single dimensions of our faith. We have to have faith according to knowledge. Come on, somebody. So you just can pick up a man and think he's a husband. You just can pick up a wife, a woman, and think that they are wives. What makes them that is their preparation, their act, and their demonstration. Come on. Just like we have people going to Bible school and they come out and say there's a pastor. Scripturally, that is an abomination. That does not make them a pastor. God has to call you to be a pastor. And the anointing of the shepherd comes upon the pastor because the job of the pastor is to shepherd the people. Amen. You can't teach people how to heal people. Amen. It's not an act like witchcraft. Amen. God wants to anoint you to heal. Amen. So the title of evangelist is one who preach with a flame of fire and brings forth mighty signs and wonders. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Amen, somebody. Many of us say, well, God called me to be an evangelist. And they sit down and they're waiting for God to use them. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Just like many of us receive a prophecy. God could have blessed you with a job and sit down at home. And you're waiting for the job to come at your door. God promised he's going to finish build my house. So you see I'm waiting for the brick to fall from the sky. He said seek. Knowledge, knowledge. What is it? Seek. So God tell me I'm going to get a, a job. God tell me I'm going to finish my house. Seek. But he said seek. He said seek. And you shall. No. Ask! But if you did not ask, you cannot what? It doesn't matter who's the prophet that prophesying to you. He can see something. But if you never go after anything, you will never attain anything. So the embassy, you don't understand the titles of your faith. Faith will work it by knowledge. The Bible said in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1, no faith is the substance. The substance is that knowledge. The substance is that promise. Hope for the evidence of things that cannot be seen. For he said in the book of Romans chapter 10, 5, bear them record that many of my people have a zeal of me, but not according to the knowledge of me. For not all Israel is Israel according to the flesh. We are, amen, princes of God according to our faith, the knowledge of our faith. Let me say the knowledge of your faith, the knowledge of your faith. Jesus met the man in the pool of bed, say that he came to him, he couldn't walk and he asked him, he said, would you be healed? He didn't say be healed him. He asked him a question. Would you be healed? Because healing was of his faith. It was his response that would have gotten healed. So he said, would, would you be healed? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on. Amen. In a different situation, we saw the Seraphinian woman, Greek by nature, knelt down before Jesus. Jesus didn't come to bring deliverance to her. He came to Israel. His disciples was assigned to go to the world, but he came to 
Israel to deal with Israel. The Greek woman knelt before Jesus and said, My daughter is possessed grievously ill with a demon spirit. She's only but 12 years old. Jesus said, It's not fit to give the children bread on the dogs. She knelt down and began to worship him and cry out to him for mercy and said, But master, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master table. The woman had knowledge of kingship. She had knowledge of authority. She had knowledge, amen somebody, of how dogs eat. They eat the crumbs. They eat the leftovers. And she was saying, if you only give me the leftovers, that even that is more than enough. And Jesus, who just called the woman a dog, said unto her, said, woman, go thy way. Whose faith? Was it the faith of Christ? She said, woman, the faith that you have right now will make you whole. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We, we speak about a centurion man. A Roman soldier. Thousands of soldiers under him. He came with faith. Come on, somebody. Am I speaking to somebody? The centurion man, he was a custom given commands. And he knew that every soldier, whatever he said to them, they must do it. If they don't do it, death is their penalty. Come on, somebody. Loss of job is a penalty. Come on, somebody. Being in prison is a penalty. Come on. And he said, I understand how authority works. And I understand if I speak to the soul that they obey. And I understand that you have authority I don't have. You are able to speak to sickness. You are able to speak to demons. You are able to speak and they obey. So I know you don't have to come to my house. And I know that you don't need to see my servant. But I know you know every sickness by name, and you know every demon by name. And I know if you command them, they will obey. Whose faith got a servant here? Was it Jesus' faith? Servant. Was the servant's faith? Today, Christianity have it back to front. They think that it, it takes the man of God's faith to heal them. The man of God, his job is simply to have faith that God has called him to do the work of a prophet or evangelist or an apostle. Amen. Once he has that faith, there's no more he can do for you. Your faith must be in the ability to believe that whatever God says through the vessel of the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, the pastor must come to pass. Before Jesus' ministry was at hand, there was the wedding feast at Cana. There was a wedding feast of Cana. And they ran out of wine. And, 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 Jean and Mary, the mother of Jesus, called him and said, they run out of wine. Jesus knew in his heart what Mary wanted to do. Because he did it over and over in your house. Then they had no food to eat. 